which our next step as we scroll down below frequency band is training protocol. As I click training protocol, I get yet another control box. This is giving me what the protocol for channel one is. So as I scroll down slightly, I see a channel select one and two. Each of these panels are independent, but we're gonna start with channel one for now. As then I scroll back up, I can see that my delta is on ignore. We're not training, we're not gonna have any feedback based on delta today. But theta, for instance, happens to be a stop or an inhibit. We look over and we see 5.9 and oftentimes I'm asked, but isn't theta four to seven hertz? This actually represents the ending threshold in microvolts of the last session, or just a default number to start at. The system will, with auto thresholding, reset this number once we begin, so it's not really that important. But to keep in mind, if this is session number two or three or four of the client, that would give you an idea of where the threshold was when the last session ended. As we scroll down to the next item, it's alpha. We see that's on ignore. Low beta is also on ignore. As we go up to the upper right-hand side, we notice that beta is a go or a reward. Okay. Again, we see 3.0, not representing any hertz or bandwidth. This just happened to be where the threshold ended last session. High beta happens to also be a stop or an inhibit. And again, that threshold, it was 11.8, but we'll reset after baseline as the new session begins. As we look at gamma, we see ignore, user we see ignore. If this happened to be a two channel protocol, as we scroll back over to the left, we see a channel selector box. As I hit and I toggle between one and two, you'll notice that on channel two, everything's on ignore. If this was a two channel protocol, you could independently set up a second protocol in this channel or you could mirror channel one. But as I go back to channel one, I see my stop on theta. As I go to channel two, I see it, it's on ignore because we're not doing anything with channel two, this particular protocol. So I leave it on channel one. Our next option is to click the auto threshold options button. As I click this, we get yet another control box. And under this control box, there's several decisions to be made. Starting up at the top, you may notice our auto set goes or our rewards. And the definition's very important here. It's 60% time over threshold. That means that the goal is for the client to be above their threshold 60% of the time. We only want them to fall out of criteria no more than 40%. As we look at stops, this is where it gets slightly confusing. Auto set stops, we use the same definition, is 20% time over threshold. So when you look at that, the goal is for the client to be in criteria 80% of the time because the goal is to be below threshold, not over it. We're only over it 20% of the time. We also give you an independent setting for high beta just so it can be used as a guard band. And you notice that we use 10. And these numbers are all adjustable and you can adjust them both here and from the training screen live. But currently, the goal would be for the client to meet criteria for high beta 90% of the time because the definition again reads 10% time over threshold and it's a stop so we want to be below. Our next option is auto thresholding on or off. Pretty simple. We're, most of the time it's defaulted on. Most people do use auto thresholding. But for some reason if you do not want to use auto thresholding and you want to manually threshold, you can simply turn it off. As we scroll down, we have to make some decisions on how often do we want the auto thresholding to update. Our first choice is manual, that we as a clinician will control when will the computer reset the thresholds based on these targets by simply pressing the Y key on the keyboard. Also, another option is to auto update once after pre-baseline. You, you may run a 30 second or one minute baseline prior to starting the session in which the computer will assess the client in a non-feedback based state. 
set the thresholds then based on these target percentages, and then they'll train on that one threshold for the rest of the session. The most common, and actually the default, is auto update after baseline and after each run. We can slice sessions into runs. So for instance, as an example, for a 20 minute run, you may have a 30 second baseline with no feedback, and then you would simply begin training and every two minutes, you'd have a run. So you'd have two, or I'm sorry, you would have 10 two minute runs. Each run, the computer would reset the thresholds based on the targets, and they would continue receiving feedback. This would help drive a client in a specific direction. Note also that the Y key can always be used to manually update at any time. So if we see the thresholds are a little too easy or a little too hard at any point of the session, we don't need to wait to the next run. We can simply hit the Y key and update them at that moment. Since we've made some changes, we want to remember to always again use the OK button to close the window. And as we close the window, we go back to the control protocol and threshold value screen. Again, we click OK once more, and we're back to the setup options screen.